Retail sales in 2014 are forecast to rise in every region around the world. Asia and Australia are expected to see the most growth at nearly 7%. Analysts predict a 5.5% increase for Latin America. And despite Europe's recent economic woes, the western part of the region will get an increase of three-tenths of a percent. And the National Retail Federation expects overall U.S. holiday sales to rise 4.1 percent by the end of 2014. Now, that would be the biggest gain in three years. Now, when you go shopping for holiday gifts for your loved ones, there are factors that determine what you're going to buy. And according to one expert, the company that makes the item and the price may be the factors with the greatest influence. For more on that, CCTV's Philip Yen spoke with Jim Joseph. He's the president of Con & Wolf North America. And Phil asked him about the role of brand authenticity and how consumers choose what they buy. Sure. Actually, we wanted to know what it means also. So we polled consumers all around the world in actually 12 markets around the world. And we asked them to tell us what it means for a brand to be authentic. And it was really interesting because they played back some things that we wouldn't necessarily thought we would hear. Things like communicating honestly about their products, showing integrity, communicating honestly about the impact that the brand has on the environment being true to their suppliers and to their partners, having a purpose greater than just making money. These are measures that they attribute to authentic brands that they actually thought were far more important than the attributes of the product or innovation or constantly evolving. They were actually more concerned about a brand being authentic, which we thought was really fascinating. I mean, I'm just thinking of examples that would fit what you just told me. I mean, would Starbucks be one of them? I mean, they've gone on record a number of times to say that, look, pro profit's important, but it's not the most important thing. That is a perfect example. Starbucks has been very transparent about the company's beliefs. They've been very transparent about their policies with suppliers. They've been very communicative about how profits are not the number one motivator. In fact, they put employees first as an example. So that is very authentic behavior according to what we heard from consumers. So that's a perfect example. Um, brand loyalty. This, this is a tough one because, you know, over the course of time, events happen. For example, Target, their security breaches. Um, you named a company, they've had, you know, challenges to deal with. Right. Uh, how, how does a company ensure there is brand loyalty when consumers do have a lot of choices and uh, ultimately price is a consideration? Absolutely. At the end of the day, it's all about building a relationship with your customers and making them understand that you are on their side so that when a problem does exist or a hiccup or, in, as you just mentioned, a data breach, you respond appropriately as a brand and consumers trust that you are responding on their behalf. In fact, one of the things that came out in our study was that consumers want to feel protected. They want to feel protected with their privacy, with their data, with their food supply, so that when there is a problem, if you respond appropriately and correct it and transparent about it, then you're going to build brand loyalty because people understand that you are looking out for their interests above and beyond their own. So I think it does build brand loyalty, yes. I hope I don't date myself, but, uh, but I remember in the past, in, in lectures with professors, they would teach us that people choose brands because they want to be associated to a brand. If you want to be associated with a, uh, a sort of the luxury car, if you will, you'll go buy a luxury car because you want people to associate you with a high-end uh, sports car, for example. Absolutely. But I, I wonder in today's day of sort of social media, if, if brands represent people or people now represent brands, and, and where is that mix? Ah, I think you just stumbled on the magical ingredient of social media because we've completely mixed the two. So brands absolutely have to reflect their customers and have to show that they relate to them and that they understand their lives and show how they add value to their lives. And then as a result, when those customers then re engage with the brand, they are representing the brands. They become spokespeople, they share content, they share experiences. And in fact, we know for sure that customers make decisions about brands based on other people's reviews, other people's opinions, what other people have shared. So you absolutely hit on that, on the magic of social media, which is it's a, a two-way street. Brands reflecting customers, customers reflecting brands. And in fact, the latter, I think, is even more influential now in terms of driving 
new purchases, loyal purchases, and, and even brand loyalty. You mentioned social media earlier and, and or, or social responsibility. And one company that comes to mind that, that's had a bit of a challenge with this was Apple. At one point, they were accused of uh, sort of not embracing sort of the best practices when it comes to manufacturing some of the goods or products with their suppliers. Now, Apple didn't necessarily make it, but they hired the suppliers who ultimately made some of the products. Does this present a challenge in the global economy when so often, you know, the parts of your car or, or your iPhone or any other product you buy, not all of it is necessarily made from the same exact real estate? Right, right. It, it absolutely represents a challenge and it represents a complexity, actually. And that was one of the key pillars that came out of our authenticity study was that customers are looking for transparency, honesty, open communications when it comes to the partners that you use and the suppliers that you use. Just come clean with it. Talk about who you're using. Show your policies for selecting them. Show that you're getting those suppliers to uphold those policies. And when something goes wrong, just own it and communicate it and talk about how you're fixing it. That's what people require now. They understand that parts come from different places, but they want to understand that you have control of it, you're owning it, and you're communicating yeah. about it. That came through loud and clear, for sure. That was Philip Yen speaking with Jim Joseph, the North American president of Con and Wolf.